Hey guys, I'm Star, and how about we watch a death battle, Black Panther versus Batman. Like, come subscribe, all of that good stuff, and then come back here and we'll watch it together. So, I want to say a few things really quick. One, I don't think there should be any more Batman death battles. I'm counting this as the fourth one, because we've seen Batman three times, and then we saw Batman Begins Batman once. Or Batman Beyond, sorry. Batman Beyond Batman once. And, uh... I just think that's enough Batman. Two, I think that this death battle is going to be good. I, I mean, you know, I just want to clarify that after I think there shouldn't be any more Batman death battles, I think this is going to be a good death battle. And I just have faith that it will be entertaining. Three, I think I saw on the death battle Twitter or ScrewTech Twitter or some sort of Twitter that uh, death battle, this was like finally them getting the top three requested Batman death battles like finished. So you know what? If it makes you guys happy, Awesome, good for you. Four, this is your show, Death Battle. You guys do what you want. If you want to have it all Batman from now on, like, have it all Batman, whatever. And I mean that genuinely. Just know that I wouldn't enjoy it as much. <laughs> I'm saying you do what you want, but, you know, that doesn't mean that we have to like it. But more power to you. It's your show. And just to clarify, yes, again, I did mean all of that genuinely. Um, I, I'm, I wish they didn't have this be another Batman Death Battle. I'm sure it will be good. Um, it's kind of cool that they're able to fulfill this like, you know, check that off their list that this is the you know The third of the top three most requested Batman uh, matchups and uh, yeah, it's your show You do what you want. So now about any sort of predictions that I can make like I can't really make much I've only I only know Black Panther very briefly from Captain America Civil War And uh, I don't I don't like the movies out yet. Is it Black Panther itself? I don't think it is if it is though clearly I haven't seen it yet So I really only know him a little bit through Captain America Civil War, and um, I don't know that much about- I mean, first, there's only so much that you could know from that movie alone. Um, but then on top of that, I haven't seen it in quite a while. You know, I saw it in theaters one time, um, and so even if I were able to absorb absolutely everything about him from that movie, at least that the movie portrayed, there's no way I would remember it all. So pretty much know nothing about him and then uh, and then there's the case of Batman which you know I know some stuff but I'm gonna wait I'm just gonna have to wait and to see with both of them uh, what's actually included in their analysis sections um, and then try to make my predictions so not much to say so with that let's get to watching and play all right guys here we go there what is this Redditor. The what is this? They change the music. Strike fear into the hearts of many. Well, sometimes they strike an awe. They completely change the music. Fear. And these two Black Panther versus Batman. Fear of specific predators to an extreme. I was waiting Batman, to do my headbang. Crime fighter from DC Comics. And Black Panther, Marvel's royal warrior scientist. I'm just gonna try to move past that. Also, they it's our job to the title their weapons, armor, is Black Panther vs. Batman, but they showed them Batman battle. Black Panther. That's weird. Dude. I'm like ignoring all they're saying so far. Before anyway, he was the Black Panther. Before he was a king, T'Challa was born the prince of Wakanda. That is how that works. Yes. Wakanda is an isolated fictional nation hidden somewhere in Africa. Okay, but yeah. while Wakanda itself is shrouded in secrecy, T'Challa was anything but isolated. He's been pretty much everywhere, but especially anywhere with a good university. After I see. earning numerous degrees from Harvard, Oxford, Berkeley, and MIT, mm -hmm. T'Challa came home. His father, Wakanda's king and then current Black Panther, had been assassinated. Oh no! And a new ruler needed to be named. But to claim the throne, he'd have to claw his way through the rite of passage. This would be a test of fortitude, mm -hmm. designed to stress T'Challa's bravery, fearlessness, and combat prowess. Also known as beating the crap out of six super deadly fighters. But hey, T'Challa wasn't just a nerdy brainiac. He could fight too. Oh, and good. he passed with flying colors. Good. Earning the throne and the blessings of Wakanda's guardian deity, Vast, the Panther God. Thank you, Vast. But he had to nab some superpowers first. So he <laughs> went through the ritual of the heart-shaped herb. This herb connected T'Challa to the Panther God. And that link bestowed him numerous superhuman abilities. Okay. Who knew getting high could turn you into a superhero? No quite like that. powers included superhuman speed, strength, healing, and agility. His senses also dramatically increased in acuity. Not only can he see in the dark, but his superior vision can even make out infrared and ultraviolet light. Oh, oh like the powers of a cat? Interesting. Yes and no. While cats do have exceptional eyesight, they cannot see infrared or UV light. But he can. Though it is a common misconception that they can. Well, just like a cat, he can always land on his feet thanks to his other super senses. Specifically, his vastly improved kinesthetic sense. I see. Which is, uh, 
that definitely a sense for something. Kinesthetic senses make up a person's awareness of their own movement, mm -hmm. like muscle memory, but in a broader scope. Oh, like how we can walk up steps without looking at them. Yes. Or when I shoot my shotgun with my eyes closed. I mean... No, no. So Black Panther's super sense lets him move and act without having to think about it too much. He well, can that's jump good. across tree branches and ledges without even looking. Hey Wiz, how do I become king of Wakanda? You can't. Those powers sound cool as hell. I don't know, Boomstick. Everyone knows you're terrible at keeping secrets. And Wakanda House is one of the biggest secrets in comic book history. What would that be? Are you talking about how Black Panther married Storm from the X-Men? I'm talking about Wakanda's enormous reserves of vibranium. Oh, yeah. oh, that's the stuff yeah. Captain America's indestructible shield is made of. Yes, it is. That's right. 10,000 years ago, a large meteorite of vibranium crashed in Wakanda. And they hoarded it all to themselves. And I don't blame them. Vibranium is an extremely durable metal which can absorb audio and kinetic energy. Yes. A single gram sells for 10,000 US dollars. And Wakanda's vibranium mound is estimated to be 10,000 tons. So that that's over $9 billion. It's quite expensive, yeah. yeah. Rich. Super rich. With all that wealth, Wakanda became a techno marvel decades ahead of the rest of the world. They were exploring outer space years before the US and Russia even tried. Oh. So why is this important? Well, as king of Wakanda, T'Challa has unlimited access to all of his country's resources. Right. That suit of his doesn't just look cool, it's made of vibranium. The panther habit is coated in a vibranium microweave mesh. Okay. This doesn't just block and That's pretty attacks, good. It can literally rob them of their momentum. Mm. For example, bullets don't bounce off. They stop dead and fall straight down. That is interesting. Their kinetic energy absorbed into the suit. Even the shells from a helicopter mounted minigun can't even phase him. He carries energy daggers, a shield of hardened light, a teleportation device, and claws. Which are made of a special Antarctic version of vibranium called anti-metal. Guess why it's oh. called that? Because it can melt other metals. It can melt what metal. this suit do? Well, the vibranium weave does have a limit to how much energy it can absorb all at once. If it takes in too much, it could wind up expelling said energy in a, well, destructive fashion. I see. Oh, God! Ah, uh, but don't worry, he's fine, somehow. Under T'Challa's leadership, Wakanda has warded off many would-be invaders. Even with Doctor Doom, Namor, and Ulysses Claw charging in, Wakanda was never truly conquered. I don't know all they those even people. They stopped an alien invasion, and hey, nobody's ever ready for one of those. In addition, T'Challa has studied every major martial art, of ah. which there are about 160. He's considered one of the finest hand-to-hand -hand fighters in the world. He's beat the shit out of Captain America, Iron Man, and Daredevil. Hell, he once knocked out Karnak, who's also one of the world's finest martial artists, with just one hit. Oh. He is incredibly strong and can jump well over 30 feet. He can even throw spears through stone walls. Typically for construction like this, a substantially hard stone would be used, such as granite. Mm -hmm. With this in mind, T'Challa must have thrown the spear hard enough to hit the wall with a force of over 20,000 pounds per square inch. Wow. Yeah, and the guy is literally strong enough to punch your jaw off. He can outrun traffic and is said to be faster than a panther, which huh. can run around 50 miles per hour. He's quick enough to pull a fast one on Wolverine. Whoa, hold on. Did he just take out five X-Men by throwing another X-Man at him? Yes, yes, he did. Well, However, take out under or... that amazing suit, he is still human. Even with the Panther God's power, he's still prone to failure. This has even caused him to relinquish those powers in the past. And like with kinetic energy, the suit can only take so many intensely focused sound blasts before overloading. Mm -hmm. Still, the Black Panther is badass. He's got the tech, the skills, and the country to prove it. Claw, do you have any children? No. Good, because I would have to kill them too. Oh. I thought it was a sympathy thing, but no, he's gonna murder Throughout children, the apparently. the of Gotham City, one name strikes fear into the hearts of even the most hardened of Who could this be? The goddamn Batman! Oh, it's Batman, guys! You know who he is? The billionaire Bruce Wayne, and it ain't his first battle to the death. No, it's not. Pretty much, though don't mistake his intentions. Vengeance may sound dramatic and all, but in truth, Batman fights crime in an attempt to save others from suffering the same kind of tragedy he experienced as a child. Well, it depends on which iteration of Batman you look at, right? Considering he was taught to be a badass by a group called the League of Assassins. Well, he dresses like a bat, sleeps with a cat burglar, and constantly brings children into battle. 
so he's clearly got a few complicated issues. Yeah. But let's see what he can really do. Bats is really, really smart and considered one of the best tacticians on Earth. No wonder he's always welcome at the Justice League, even though he doesn't have any superpowers at all. Right. Wait, you're not just some guy in a bat costume, are you? Sure, he's intelligent, okay. <laughs> but he's also incredibly deadly. He was trained to be a ninja who's a master of infiltration and silent takedowns, so sounds about right. Bruce right. has studied every martial art known to man. After perfecting full body control at the age of 18, he was able to quickly learn and master at least 127 of them, including Taekwondo, Muay Thai, Judo, and boxing. It's not every day you can find someone who can literally take you down in 127 different ways. He's also but that's just when he was young, right? They said he got a all? He's like Sherlock Holmes on steroids. He once figured out that an opponent didn't have a tongue just by the way their jaw bounced off his knuckles. Huh. There's being a detective, and then there's being Batman. And all that's before his handy dandy utility belt, filled to the brim with all sorts of useful gadgets and gizmos. A lot of which are thanks to his family business, Wayne Enterprises. That's right. From steel mills to airlines to record labels, this company does it all. And that means Batman has it all, too. According to Forbes, Wayne's net worth thanks to his company adds up to 9.2 billion US dollars. With that much cash, he can afford any kind of weapon he wants. Grappling hooks, smoke pellets, cryo and thermite grenades, and of course, the batarang. But I'm just wondering, how can he uh, get through the vibranium? As a boomerang weapon, Wayne eventually molded his batarangs into custom shurikens, some of which are outfitted with electric shocks, flash bulbs, and explosives. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, don't forget his bat suit. It can resist fire, electricity, and bladed attacks, and is almost totally bulletproof thanks to a Kevlar vest sewn into it. Plus, his cowl sports night infrared and UV vision. But Bats is more than just a tech wizard. This guy bench presses a thousand pounds in his everyday workout. A thousand pounds! That is a lot. I thought this guy didn't have any superpowers. He doesn't. The current bench press world record is actually slightly higher at 1,075 pounds, solidly placing Wayne at peak human levels. This idea generally applies to him in pretty much every area physically and mentally. He's mm -hmm. strong enough to break through walls, rip apart car parts, and pull out prison bars. He is quick enough to avoid gunfire and even Darkseid's nearly unavoidable Omega Beams. In his strongest suits, he's even tough enough to take a hit from Superman. Yeah, if Brucey ever enters the Olympics, everyone else might as well rage quit. Same difference, really. I'm really trying That's to, not like, to say he's compare invincible. things. True. Whenever it's right, really hard. Whenever he gets in a fight with some big bads, he usually has to keep his distance. He's also somewhat mentally unstable and prone to lashing out. However, he knows this. It's one of the main reasons why he refuses to carry firearms. That's a bummer. Those are my favorite types of arms. Maybe they'll help him next time Bane tries to break his back. But yeah, of all they his might. traits, Bruce Wayne's strongest attribute is his sheer unstoppable tenacity. Even after being drugged by the Joker after days without sleep, put in a straitjacket, locked in a coffin, and buried alive six feet underground, he refused to die. Yeah. It takes a lot, a lot, to take down the Batman. What the hell are you? Oh, this is hard, because this is the end, but I still don't know... I'm Batman. ...about breaking through his suit. Alright, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, oh, is it a Blue Apron commercial? Made me think about eating some with Blue Apron. Whoa, why? Who could have seen this coming? I did. At least it's a different commercial now. Look, they they changed it. This is what they're going with now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> There you go, guys. If you want Blue Apron, you got a deal here. All right. Oh, are we about to go then? Oh, that's it. Oh, pause. 
Who's it? Boomstick, you didn't give your... Now it's time for a death battle or anything. I was waiting for that cue, man. You let... Ugh. Wow, I just had to go. Anyway, let's talk about uh, what I think so far. And honestly, I think that it's really hard to say. It seems like Batman has the advantage in multiple ways, um, given that I know he's gone up against super-powered people. And they did say he has to take a step back and let the others handle it when a lot of foes come in. But still, I know that he has, like, survived against, you know, really powerful people. People who did have powers, or at least things happened to them that gave them abilities kind of thing, you know? Um, and I don't... Ugh, it seems like he has more experience. It seemed like he knew more martial arts styles, because they pointed out the whole, like, 127, I think it was. But I think they were talking about a young Bruce, or a younger, at least, Bruce. Um, because before that, they said he knew all martial arts styles known to man, whereas with... Um, Black Panther, they said he knew, like, all major martial arts styles, which were 160. Um, all major and all martial arts styles are very different. Um, and so, what I- okay, here's what I think Black Panther has going for him. I think that he has, you know, natural super abilities, you know, superhuman strength, speed, um, eyesight, things like that. You know, he doesn't rely on his cowl, I don't think, right? Isn't that just innate with him? Now that he was, like, blessed by the Panther God or whatever it was? Um... And he has his vibranium suit, which I don't know how Batman is going to get past. I was trying to watch for something, but it didn't seem like there was anything that would get past that. You know, they said that it could, you know, the vibranium suit could only take so much um, in terms of like either a beating or sound, but it didn't seem like Batman had specific things that could counter that. They could very well pull things out for him, but it just didn't seem like anything specific that could counter it. Um, and then he has advanced tech, but I guess so does Wade. It seems like Bruce has less advanced tech, just because, I mean, if you're already going to space before anyone on Earth did, like, that's probably pretty good. And having that much money at your disposal, it seemed like they were saying that he had higher tech, but we know that Batman has some pretty insane tech and computers and stuff too, so I don't know how to compare that one. Um, I don't know if they're gonna let Batman use Alfred this time, because if they do, Black Panther doesn't have anyone. So I'm gonna think, I assume they won't do that, but it makes me wonder. Um, because I don't think they did during Batman and Spider-Man. Um, but then, like, Batman has his, you know, longer experience, I believe. Uh, it seems like he's smarter. It seems like he's a better detective. It seems like he is more tenacious. Um, and just, you know, did I already say more experience? I probably already did. So here's the issue. I think that Batman is going to win, but I don't know of any way he could get through Black Panther's suit. You know? I don't know about that. And I know that Black Panther has been shown to be strong enough again to, like, just knock off someone's jaw, but... I don't know. I would just imagine Batman would be capable of those kinds of things, too, or would have survived those things with, again, some of the people that he's been up against who have surely punched him, you know? I mean, I know Bane has punched it. Like, is, is Black Panther stronger than Bane? I don't know. I'm gonna say Batman's going to win, but on flimsy grounds, just because, again, like... How do you get past the vibranium suit? That's about it, but I think I think Batman's going to win. So go. We'll see. I thought this was a 3D battle. That was just a very No, it's not even a 3D battle, it's 2D. Alright then. To challenge a king is to face the might of his people. Why'd you take your I mask off? Something to fear. I guess he put it back on. You got this, Batman. Kill him. Ow! Ow, my breast! You good? I don't know why you're fighting, but kill him anyway. Ow! Beware of lions! Oh no! Why are... Why include the lions? <laughs> uh, 
I'm so very confused right now. Witness the power of a king! Why are they fighting animals? Prepare yourself. I'm prepared for anything. I hope so, because I I voted for you. Playtime is over. Oh no! Amateur. Did you think you were safe? The strong shall hunt the weak. That is the law of nature. Oh, and there goes his head. And my rule is law. Well, good job, Black Panther. KO! Whoa, that's a new one. Black Panther and Batman were pretty evenly matched. Both were super geniuses and expert combatants. Well, BP was stronger and faster thanks to that superhuman herb. Right. It definitely helped, but alone was not enough to beat the bat. Batman has won dozens of duels against people with similar or even better abilities. Okay. As far so as I was right on that front. Concerned, neither held a distinct advantage. However, that was not the case when it came to their weapons and armor. Long story short, that vibranium got Batman stumped. He just didn't have anything in that belt of his that could get around it. Okay, we I'm satisfied with that then. Movies, TV shows, and more to see if Batman had any possible way of countering the vibranium. While he's used hundreds of clever gadgets over the years, we were actually very surprised to find that he had no reliable method of getting around armor like that. Fair. Take a look at Batman's fights with Bane. He doesn't have armor, but he's physically superior to Bats just like Black Panther is. And what does Batty always do to beat him? Aim for the weak spot. <laughs> but guess what? Black Panther doesn't have a weak spot. Right. It's certainly believable that Wayne had the ability to develop a gun that could overload the- Oh, absolutely. Head. But do you have but one even now? Even if he could, yeah. he never would wield it in the first place thanks to his rejection of all firearms. And while his suit- Well, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say bullets, that. It didn't stand a chance against Black Panther's anti-metal claws. In the end, Bruce just waned in comparison to T'Challa. The winner is Black Yay, Panther. Yay, claps for Black Panther. Let's start hey this guys, season off strong the with the loss. Five. Want to watch the commentary on this episode? Click that box right over there. Start a first membership trial. And if you want the fight track, all you got to do is click the link in the description below. Sounds pretty good. Next time. Wait, what? Oh. Raven versus Twilight Sparkle. That's funny because it's the same voice actress. They're both Terra Strong. Hmm. I didn't expect that. Uh... Okay, well, let's talk about this death battle. All right, first, in case some people are curious, we'll talk about the next death battle. So for those of you who didn't know, I do consider myself a brony. However, I haven't watched, like, the last three seasons of My Little Pony. I think the last one I saw was season four, and I think we're on, like, seven now. But, um... Yeah, I think it's a good show. I think that it's for anyone, not necessarily for everyone. Um, I think that it's entertaining, it teaches good messages, but it isn't, like, force-feeding it, at least most of the time. Uh, there are a number of bad episodes, for sure. Or episodes that just, you know, are cringy or whatever, but I think that, I think that a lot of it is really good. Um, and so... I'm looking forward to that next one, honestly, a lot more than I was looking forward to this one. Partly because I didn't want another Batman one, and... Well, is that one going to be 3D? That would be pretty cool. I don't think it's going to be 3D. Where were they? Actually, yeah, don't make it 3D. Please don't make it 3D, because now that I think about it, you would not... I don't think you could find a good 3D model of Twilight Sparkle. Excuse me. One that I would like, at least, you know, to see in a death battle. Um, so I guess let's just talk now about this death battle. Um... Wait, no, I'm not done yet. Go back to the other one. So Raven vs. Twilight, I wonder why exactly. Now, I haven't watched a lot of Teen Titans, so I'm not sure all of Raven's abilities, but I know it has some, it's some sort of magic, and I thought she could kind of just, like, summon things, kind of, like, create things, or so, you know? But it just makes me think, like, why Twilight specifically, if not just for the Terra Strong reference? But if that's the case, like, why not also include Bubbles? Why not also include, like, Timmy Turner, you know? Like, let's just have a Terra Strong Battle Royale! You know, that would, 
That'd be interesting. Um, but I'm just not exactly sure the reasoning behind why she was so requested, unless it really is just the Terra Strong thing, or I'm just not aware of Raven's abilities. But anyway, okay, now to talk about this death battle. Honestly, I thought it was underwhelming. Um, especially for a season premiere, like I think this one is supposed to be, right? Isn't this the season five premiere? It, mm, I'm pretty sure it is, because <laughs> we've had a break and they changed the music and everything. Yeah, so I personally thought that it was underwhelming. Um, we'll get this out of the way. I do prefer 3D animations. I think the 3D animations are in general superior and I think that it should have started this season with the 3D animation. That's not to say that the 2D animation itself was bad. It's not. The animator did a very good job um, and it was entertaining but you know I, I guess I'm was holding it to a higher <sighs> standard. There we go. That's the word. Um, it's much more than I could ever do so Kudos, uh, but it's not as much my thing and that's not to say that 3d is superior just in general I know a lot of people enjoy 2d animations more, but this is my personal preference. I think 3d is better um, When done right, you know, like it could be done very poorly But Torian does a, a really good job with his 3d animations um, Like if you look at that, I think link versus cloud was our first one from what I remember not as fantastic, you know, but I'm glad that they I'm glad they tried it because then, you know, they kept doing it with other death battles and I think it worked out really well. But I'm surprised that they didn't have a 3D one for this death battle being the season premiere that it was. And as I imagine, there are 3D models available for both the characters. Maybe there aren't. Maybe that's the issue, but either way. Um, aside, I mean, so like I said, the animation did look really good, but it, it also made me question so many things. It's like, okay, one, why are they fighting? Two. Why are they fighting in a zoo? Three, is there a reason you're fighting in a zoo aside from just to give us animals for them to fight? Why were they fighting animals? I didn't get that. I mean, it's like, I really didn't understand. It seems like it was just kind of forced in, you know? If, if you're not going to provide a story, then just have it be like a final destination map, you know? Just have it be relatively empty and let them duke it out. Like, why are you going to have them punching lions and rhinos and stuff like that? That's just weird. Um, I'm glad, I'm really glad that they didn't end it. I was afraid they were going to end it. Um, by having Batman thrown into the sharks because for the record once they were down there I was figuring Batman was going to lose um, And I was really afraid that he was going to be thrown into the shark pit and then eat in that way And I would have had many complaints uh, Just because even though the animation is not how the death necessarily has to happen You know, it's just a representation meant for entertainment. Um, I would have been upset because that's like you know, an environment kill that has nothing really to do with the characters, and there wasn't a reason for a shark to be there in the first place. Much like, much like if Batman had won because the lion had roared and broken, you know, Black Panther's armor, that would have been ridiculous. That would have been crazy. Um, so, I'm glad they didn't go that route, is what I'm saying. But I still didn't understand why they were there, why there were those animal involvements. I don't know, because it's not like Black Panther, you know, summoned them Aquaman style or anything like that, or spoke to them and didn't see me. He was fighting them too, so it was just they're both taking time out of the battle where they're supposed to be fighting each other to suddenly fight animals for some reason. Like, we're fine without that, I think. We came here to see Black Panther versus Batman, that's what I at least wanted to see. If you thought that it was awesome they included animals, awesome. Good for you. I hope you enjoyed it all the more because of that. But me, not so much. Um, I can't fault the analysis this time. I think the analysis did a fine job. You know, like, in the last death battle that I watched, I had an issue with it because they hid stuff, because they were tricky with their wording, because all this other stuff. I think that they were pretty straightforward this time about um, the analyses. I do think, however, that they pointed out, again, you know, the, the different martial arts styles where Black Panther knew 160 and Batman knew all that mankind had ever come up with kind of thing, you know? But then in the end, they talk about how they are of, like, equal skills, or at least how they're close, but... I thought that that was gonna be a little bit more meaningful, and maybe, maybe Batman is more skilled, but it just didn't matter in their conclusion, so they didn't bring that up, but it was still a little weird. Um, but yeah, like I said, I can't fault the analysis, really, because it was a matter of what I was thinking. Does Batman have any means of actually getting through the Vibranium armor? And I was kind of thinking about... You know, what Death Battle's done in the past, like, I thought to Wolverine versus uh, Raiden, and how... I can't remember exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure it had something to do with, you know, Pierce and Wolverine's adamantium, um, and that kind of thing. And so, even if they don't explicitly state it, it seemed like it was something they could pull. 
uh, from Batman's tech that he's used at some point and say like, well, he's been able to pierce this metal and it seems like this is similar enough to this that it could work. Uh, but then they even specified they went through different movies and comics and everything and it didn't seem like Batman had tech. And so that's fine. Um, and because that was the big reason that Black Panther won and that was the only reason I was really hesitant about Batman winning, you know, I still feel kind of like a winner. Uh, this is absolutely a loss for me. But I still feel kind of like a winner just because, hey, at least I was able to understand, like, the reasoning for Batman losing uh, before they had to tell me. So, yay me. Um, I don't think there's really... Oh, yeah, let's actually... Th let's talk really quick about the fact that this is a new season. I am upset that they changed their music. I genuinely am. Like, that was such... To me, that was iconic death battle music, and now it's just some random metal track, you know? That was, that's how I felt about it. I felt like the invader theme was death battle music. You know, it was the death battle theme. It was, and it was iconic. And I was waiting for the, at the beginning of it, you know, da -na -na, da -da -na -na. but then it just, uh, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. It just went on with the metal track. Uh, and I think that that's lame. I don't like that. I mean, I already didn't like when they changed the background because I thought they were just going for like a suicide squad. We're edgy kind of feel. And, um, as opposed to, the, I mean, okay, the other thing was edgy too, with spikes and blood and like swinging chains. But still, you know, it was iconic to death battle and not them trying to adapt to like something else, you know? I don't know if they're doing like market research or whatever. I mean, they're a successful company. They're doing well. Good for them again. It's their show. They do what they want. But I personally was disappointed both with that and then with this season's change with the music. I don't know if it'll grow on me. I don't know if it will. Um, we'll see, I guess. I also didn't like how Boomstick didn't say it's time for a death battle, partly because that threw off my cue. You know, that's what I'm waiting for. I go through the commercial, I wait for that, I pause as the doors close, you know, and then I go on with my prediction. Um, but this time, the doors close, and I'm like, wait, is it gonna show something else, and then it's time for a death battle? No, they just jumped right into it, so... Yeah, I was disappointed with that, too. Um... I don't think there's really anything else to talk about though, you know, like, next time is interesting, I'm not sure why they're being matched up, aside from their Terra Strong connection, but I, I guess magic too, in general, but I don't know the extent of Raven's abilities, and I haven't seen Twilight for about three seasons, so I don't know what she's capable of anymore. You know, like, she's an alicorn, there you go, like, that's about all I know now. Um, I do know that if any bad guy comes up, um, some bullcrap will happen where they will win, because it's My Little Pony, and that's going to happen. Uh, yes, <laughs> that's just how that's how all of like the season finales or premieres I actually don't remember season premieres or finales if they have a big bad They're just gonna win in some or the good guys are gonna win in some Fantastical kind of bullcrap friendship is magic way um, and that's that's what I'd fault the series for Almost the most honestly is how they deal with their baddies uh, But anyway enough about that uh, this death battle, it was fine, is what I'd say. You know, like like I said, the animator did a good job. Um, but I just didn't like the setting. I didn't like the lack of story. I didn't like the 2D style, or choice, basically. Uh, but maybe it was mandatory because of a lack of 3D sprites or whatever, 3D models. Um, but it was just uh, underwhelming overall to me, especially for a premiere. Um, it was just underwhelming, so... Oh well. Let me know what you guys thought about this death battle in the comments below. Whether you liked it, whether you disliked it, what you thought about this or that, etc. So on and so forth. And, um, you know, if you want to see my reaction to the next time, I suppose, stick around. Of course, in the comments, please remember to be civil and all of that. You don't have to agree with everything. You're totally allowed to disagree with things. I would say, though, don't seek out fights, don't start fights, and don't be a dickhead. Cool? Alright, cool. With that, we're calling it here. Cue outro, go!